you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. There is power in the truth. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In other words, it will make a change in you. It brings you to the awareness of something. It changes your self-perception. It changes how you view yourself. It makes you more stable. It makes you able to have defense against that which is false, which affects your person, your character, who you perceive yourself to be. It gives you the ability to break bonds. It changes you. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Many people are led in error. Many people are bound by lies and traditions because they don't know. They just follow somebody because they don't know for themselves. They don't know the Word of God. Jesus said, King Yahshua said, when he, the Holy Ghost, is come, he shall lead and guide you into all truth. The truth will make you free because it will make a change in you. You need to understand that. Children of light are to walk as children of light. The kingdom of heaven is coming. The kingdom of heaven is joy, righteousness, even living righteous by the power of the Spirit, and peace in the Holy Ghost. You need to know the truth. If you do not know the truth, you cannot proclaim the gospel. Many people are trying to proclaim the gospel and don't know the truth. And there are basic foundational truths that must be understood. God has a supreme son, boy. This is a basic foundational truth. Spirit can have children. If you don't believe the spirit can have children, you do not believe that God has a son. If you say the Trinity theory is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and they are the same individuals and three persons come in three different forms, you do not know the truth. You do not believe that God has a son. You don't know nor believe the gospel. If you do not believe the spirit can have and beget children, God the Father begat a son that was given birth to by the Holy Ghost. An eternal seed of God was birthed as a seed child of the Father. That if you don't believe God, Elohim, most high that is, has children, you don't believe, number one, that Elohim has a supreme son, though he has many sons. Even when John wrote me so the word of God was only begotten, John was a son of God also. That must be understood. He was a son of God born of the Holy Ghost. 
and there were many sons of God in heaven. But King Yahshua is the only begotten directly of the Father. All other sons are of him, for him, through him, and by him. And then you need to understand that God sent his son inside of a man's seed to redeem man too. You need to know these facts before you can proclaim the truth. Spirit can have children. God has a son. No matter your preachers don't believe that. No, they don't believe that either. They have their own rationale. They some come from the mythology, the idolatry of their ancestors to try and interpret God in the Hebrew text. So they come up with different ideas and concepts from that of their ancestral experiences that they have worked on. So they don't perceive that God has a son. And when it comes to his son taking on the seed of Abraham or coming in the flesh, they do the same thing. They go to a rationale. They will say that God is the son if they even acknowledge and not even acknowledge that God really has the son. They will say that God the son did not enter into Abraham's sperm. They have a different doctrine. They may say it that he did and then explain it away in the way that they say it happened. Mary, they say, was the only parent of Christ. So as far as God's Supreme Spirit Son entering the seed of Abraham, that's not believed in most of the Gentile so-called Christian church. You know that Catholicism denies it. Parsonism, most of them do not acknowledge it either. And it's those that don't learn it. They'll say it, they'll quote it, but they don't really believe it. They even say that God made and then turn around and deny that Jesus had a, a father of genealogy of this earth. They want to, they'll read the fire Hebrews 2 and 16. This is common among men. This is common. They do that. It's the way they do it. So you have your doctrines coming out from the seminaries. But you must have one. God begot the Holy Ghost birth, the Supreme Spirit, Son of God, King Yahshua, before he ever came to the earth and entered, having entered into a seed that was taken of Abraham's loins. A sperm taken from Abraham's lords. Your churches don't believe in us more. They deny Christ actually really coming in the flesh. They just have a concept, kind of like Santa Claus, something that they imagine. Out of their own reasoning and rational, rationalizing, because they don't believe the truth. Many of your theologians will say that that will defile Christ to have done what the scripture says. As it says in Hebrews 2 and 14, for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he partook of the same, and then he entered into flesh and blood, the same that was already there, here. He came into the genealogy of men and taken on Abraham. See, it continues in the very same chapter. Next two verses, next verse after there we went in the recording that it may be clear and yet me and deny that and don't accept it. He walked in sinful flesh, human sinful flesh as we are in, and never yield the sin. Men don't like that because they want to say that they got the sin, regardless of being born the Holy Spirit, nobody can rule right. So these things are rejected to Christ coming in the seed of Abraham in sinful flesh. Conceive of Mary in her reproductive cell, 
her flesh and blood, and Abraham's flesh and blood. This is not your gospel. It's the gospel of the Hebrew and Jewish text, but it's not what's taught in this country. Your theologian get rational, allow the spirit, most of you accustomed to follow it. You must also understand that in him coming in the flesh, that he was made of a woman, made under the law, as records Galatians 4. He was made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Were, used to be, were at that time, under the law. He was made of a woman. That's not a lie. He's Mary's flesh and blood. And Abraham's seed. Somebody tell you Mary's DNA or her blood to get in him. That's a lie. He was born of Mary's reproductive cells. Mary's cell from which blood is born. Made a cell. Christ was Mary's flesh and blood. You have theologian that denied that. He was made of a woman, made under the law. Hebrews 10 and 9 says his death was for the redemption of the transgression of the first testament. The Bible confirms. But your gospel say that Jesus died for your sins under the New Testament. You preach a different gospel than what Paul, Peter, James and John preach of those who devised it to you. The scripture, the Hebrew and Jewish text, the Bible teach that Christ is dead but for the redemption of the sins of the first testament. Hebrews 9 15. In Romans, the apostle Paul wrote and said to them after he explained after that we cannot be married to Christ. Men cannot marry Christ. Right to them back then, first of all, we learn of it. That they could not have married Christ as long as Israel was married to God the Father. Making the point that the Father had to die, who's the husband? Or as Israel had to die, who's the bride? Before men can marry Christ. Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 4 explains this. And he made the point after he gave an example of a woman whose husband died and said to them, Brother, you become dead to the law. Particularly in the laws of covenant, whereby God married Israel, the marriage covenant. For Israel said, I do. Love, cherish, and will obey these commands according to your instructions and being, or commands and being your wife, your people. The Ten Commandment laws of the marriage covenant. Paul made the point that when the bride died, is Christ substituting for the bride dying from the Father's will. Then, when Christ died and therefore the bride was dead by substitution, then the covenant, the Ten Commandments and the laws, was also dead. Because Israel, as well all mankind, was dead. They were all dead. Those who said they're still under the law don't even know what they're talking about. They are denying the power of the cross of Christ. They are denying the power of Christ's death, substituting dying for man. Paul wrote in Corinthians, he said, We thus judge that when one died for all back then, over 1900 years ago, then were all dead. So the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans, Brethren, Romans 7, he said in 4, Brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Like as a woman's husband dies, then the marriage covenant is dead. So when Christ died, instead of you dying, Israel dying, the marriage covenant 
of the Ten Commandments and laws brought by God was married to Israel, it died too. Because you did. So it says, Brother, you also become dead to the law of Moses by the body of Christ. The bride is dead. My father died in the 1990s when he died. The marriage coming between him and my mother, it died that day. It was dead. I'm just telling you the Bible. His death was for the redemption of the transgression on the first test in Hebrews 9 15. He was made of a woman made under the law, under the law to redeem them that were under the law. He didn't die for your sins. He had to take away the first before he could establish the second. Hebrews 10 and 9. I'm just explaining the gospel. If you hate my words, it ain't mean you hate me. It's Christ you hate him. And the gospel. If you hate Christ, it's the Father that you hate him. Because this is what he's done. Is that ain't your tradition? Or are you are you given to follow tradition? Is that what God instructed you to do to follow tradition regardless of truth? And yet you proclaim yourself in integrity? If you do, you are a liar. In his death, he took away the first. All mankind became dead when Christ died. When he died, that Passover day, death literally passed over the world and came on the firstborn Son of God. That was the end of the world, 1900 years ago, we talk about. For man's shortcoming of Ten Commandments and the Law. Because man was dead by substitution. That's what Paul explained in Romans 7. He says, now you may be married to another, rather being married to God the Father, you can be married to God the Son, who is risen from the dead. And serve no longer in oldness of the ladder, the law written in Hebrew letters, the Ten Commandments in the law, wrote in ink and on the stone of table carved. But now you serve in newness of spirit. God said, I will put my law in your inward part, even the law of my nature. A seed child of myself. Now you serve in newness of spirit. The first covenant is dead. That's why you have an Old Testament and a New Testament. Because after Christ's death, he gave his blood to flow from his side and the Roman soldier's spear after the Roman soldier pierced him. Full of came blood and water for his will and testament. And for encourages through his will and testament to those who were joined into him. So you have to join it to a testament by joining into Christ. You see, both testaments gave marriage through the will and testament. Gave marriage into the family of God through a will. This is getting in both testaments. Christ gave blood to flow from his side for his will and testament. The covenant of his testament is not the Ten Commands, the laws as well as in the Old Testament, chapter of the Ark. His blood was not put on the top of a dead covenant. Nor did his blood take away the sins under that old passage, but it was his death. Hebrews 10 and 9, again I quote, his death was for the redemption of the transgressions under the first testament. Again, I quote from Romans, Paul wrote, Brother, you become dead to the Lord by the body of Christ, death of his body. It's not a mistake in the scripture. You just got it wrong. For over a thousand years, you haven't got it right. The old had to be taken away before the second could be given. Hebrews 10 and 9. Don't be offended with me. I speak as the Spirit of God reveals to me the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of Elijah. Anguish you, that's your problem. I'm just telling you the truth. Of the word of God. Your offense is against God. Your offense is against Elijah, the spirit of Elijah. 
who is Melchizedek. Your offense is against Christ. Your offense is against Elohim Most High. After his death, Christ gave his blood for his testament. And for remission of sins under his testament. You don't get this. You don't get the truth of the gospel. If you don't separate Christ's body, death, and his blood shed after his birth, you do not get the understanding of the gospel. You do not understand the kingdom of heaven is come. Because see, Christ had to take away the first before he could establish the second in his own blood. And that blood which also wash away sins under his testament. And gives the covenant whereby men are born into the kingdom of heaven. But before he could give that, he first had to die. Paul explained this in Romans 1 through 4 for a reason. Romans Hebrews 10 and 9 says he took away the first and stopped the second. This is for a reason. Somebody had to go through something before you could even have this New Testament. And the promises of this New Testament, of the covenant of this New Testament, Christ had to go through being beaten, whipped, nailed to a tree, died, and spent three nights and three days in hell and in the grave before this testament could even be given. Before there could even be a new testament. Before the blood of his testament which he gave to flow his body after death even came into force. That was a price. You want to ignore that and say, Christ just died for your sins and what you do and never do with your salvation and you return to secure and you can just walk into heaven, whatever, regardless of what you do, and or God release an error of foundation to your false gospel. Jesus Christ, life, rights is given to you, no matter what you do, you write to all them lies from the pit of hell. Satanic. No, 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 not kidding, but it's true. Jesus Christ, life, rights is imputed to you, they taught you. You're saying when you accept Christ and begin giving past, present, future, I know you thought you were dead, you do. Lies and errors. No, you got to obey the covenant of the New Testament. The day you hear the Holy Ghost harden out your heart, Christ says. What you do ain't going to do with your salvation, it's a lie. What you do got everything to do with your salvation. You best obey the Holy Ghost. Work out your own soul salvation with fear, tripping, tripping. The power is given unto you to live it now. If you do not live it, he that defile the temple that the Holy Ghost dwells in, him will God destroy. That's the gospel. Say you are taught a different in this nation, and that's not the way Gentile gospel is, teaches the gospel. Then Gentiles are teaching a lie. Because God is getting ready to reach back to Israel, and the restoration draws near. You might as well wake up. You might as well. You don't get these basic foundations of the gospel. You can't proclaim the truth of the gospel. God has a supreme son that he begot. The most high begot a son that was birthed by Elohim the Holy Ghost. The supreme son took on him a man's seed and entered into a man's sperm for a vessel to come to earth in A virgin by the name of Mary, the Holy Ghost put this seed inside her. She conceived it, and the seed developed into flesh in her womb. Just telling you the gospel. Just wrote down in the book. She gave birth to him in many God with us as one of us. In sin nature's flesh and blood, just like Mary, and just like Abraham, yet he never sinned. Met not even in thoughts, nor in deeds. Never righteous and holy. And it is the hope unto you to be born of the Holy Ghost, Christ in you, to give you the power to live holy. The kingdom of heaven is come. Is joy, righteousness, and peace in the Holy Ghost. 
Christ spoke many parables. He spoke parables before a multitude, saying to them, like I say to you. Many of you will hear this, and the word is falling on rocky, stony, hard ground hearts. Many of you will hear this, and some will even rejoice and say, that sounds right. But the care of this world, friendships, relationships, and etc., will root that word up out of your heart. Some of you will hear and receive of the grace of God and bring forth fruit and accept the truth of the gospel. So you can't explain that you don't understand. You're taught that baptism into Christ is just an outward act of the inward feeling of something, not a covenant. Not where you say, Lord, in this act I be wed. You know, in Roots, it showed how that our ancestors, someone used to jump the boat and act a wedding and joining into marriage. Water baptism is an act a wedding. I remember my mother was telling me that there was this old preacher who used to come around, forget his name, I think it was Elder John. Married my cousin's wife after his after his death. Married Cliff's wife after his death. I think it was him you know, who made the same said something in baptism. And he couldn't say I couldn't put my finger on it. And she was telling me about it, and then and then a little while later, as God revealing His word to me in Revelation and saying it is an act of me. Somebody has gone to the water and. It's a marriage ceremony. Makes it stand out. It's a holy marriage ceremony, holy matrimony. In water baptism, we say, Lord, in this act, I be with you, King Yahshua, as my husband, my head, my Lord, as a part of you. I join into you, a wedding. This is a holy covenant. When Christ sends the Holy Ghost down to those who believe on him, and the Holy Spirit comes on a believer, Christ says, with my spirit, I be wed, as the spirit overflows or within and without. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost when first coming to men and disciples of Christ, and it filled the temple. They were overflowing with in and without baptizing. It's two baptisms, but they're one, like a man and a woman being wedded at the wings. Or two, but they are one. Because the man and the woman becomes one. Making this in Christ, the baptisms are one. Christ pours his spirit out upon those who believe on him that the Father hath obeyed. He lets unto him. And Christ is saying, with my spirit, I be waiting. This is holy. This is sacred. Some man tell you just an hour show, you don't have to do it for our baptism. You don't have to avow unto Christ in way they would say. They lie. The groom said you must be born of the water and of the spirit. You want to get into the kingdom of heaven and be, go, go to heaven? You got to become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven down here. You can't explain the gospel. You won't accept the gospel. Somebody said, that ain't my tradition. That ain't the Baptist doctrine. You poor soul. You poor, ignorant soul. Somebody said, that ain't Catholicism doctrine. You poor, ignorant, multitude of ignorant. So that makes some of you feel better. You get a crowd of ignorant people saying, I don't want to meet you. Somebody said, They're the church of God in Christ, doctor. You poor, ignorant, blind soul. Somebody said, They're the church of Christ, is doctor. Oh, hell has enlarged itself. So we said, I know I'm going to make it. What I do ain't going to do with my salvation. You poor, Blind, ignorant, deceived, so 
judgment is lying in your hand. The great judgment is drawing near. But you have been told. These words will reach you in judgment to every ear that they fall, to every ear that they witness. They will reach you in judgment. The Holy Ghost is a cover of the New Testament. You must be born again. This is a literal birth. It's a literal birth. You need to know about this. You need to know the truth. You've got to be born into the kingdom of heaven. And most people don't even take being born in the spirit as an actual real birth. Most people don't believe that. Being born in the spirit is real. They don't believe God has a son. How can they believe that they are sons and daughters of God? 